This is the only video that you need to turn your Canon R7 into an amazing camera. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the best settings for photos and videos and how to set up your autofocus stabilization and low light in the right way. And as always, I'll leave links down below for the best pricing on all the gear that we talk about today. So first up, let's go for the body and design of the Canon R7. Chances are most of you guys already know what's what on this camera, but you might learn something new. So first up, we have the on and off button. Now, one tricky thing about this is when it's off, it's obviously off, but when it's on, it's actually only in photo mode. And in order to get the best possible video, you have to flip over to this camera icon with the two legs, and now you're in video mode. In this mode, you cannot take photos. And over here, you have the shutter button and then a separate button with a red dot for video, and then you also have an ISO button here. Once you hit this, you'll easily be able to change your ISO. And next to that, you have the mode dial. Now, there's a lot of different settings and switches on this mode dial, but the main one we need to worry about is M. This puts your camera in full manual, and this is how you're going to get the most control over your camera. And this is also how you're going to get the best video and photo settings. So over here, you have the scroll wheel to scrub through different menu settings. And then you also have a joystick for changing your autofocus points. And down here, you have the info button. Now this will change how much information is displayed on your screen. If you hit it once, you'll get a whole bunch of things around that kind of makes your screen a little too overcrowded. I personally prefer to just have it with um, just the aperture, shutter, and ISO at the bottom. And this way my screen isn't overcrowded either. Now, another thing you can do is also access your quick menu. You have two ways. One, you can hit the Q button right here on this touch screen. So if you hit Q, this other menu will come up. That's also touch enabled, so you can change all of your major settings, or you can press this middle button right here, and this will bring up the same quick menu. This is really useful for changing your settings on the fly. And also because the touch screen on the back is fully enabled, it just makes your life a whole lot easier. And another really cool thing about this screen on the back is, is that it also has touch autofocus. If you touch anywhere on the screen, it will immediately snap focus to that subject. Right now, I'm just looking at the desk, so it's not doing anything, but we will talk about autofocus later in this video. And I quickly wanna go over the in and out ports on this camera because there's quite a lot. Up here, you have the microphone. Down here, you have the headphones, and it's important not to flip those two things around. If you take this cover back, you'll actually see an HDMI port and a USB type C port. Now, this is really important because you wanna make sure you protect these ports at all time, just in case you have something plugged in and you actually bring the screen back, it will hit these ports. So it's important to make sure you protect these ports. So next up, let's show you how to set up your camera for the best possible image quality. For this, you wanna to go to the back of the camera and you wanna hit the menu button. And you also wanna make sure you're also in the on position for your on and off switch. This way you're in photo mode. Once you're in your major menu, on the very first page, you'll see image quality. Once you go into it, you'll see RAW and JPEG at the bottom. Now these two formats are really different and they're really meant for different types of shooters. If you're someone that's just casually shooting your life, you just wanna get great photos, you don't wanna be bothered with editing them or anything like that, you wanna make sure you're shooting in JPEG because this is also going to give you the best colors. When shooting in RAW mode, you're going to get a lot more data in your image, you're going to be really be able to edit these images to anything you like, but the colors are also different, they're a little less saturated, they're a little more muted, and you don't have quite as much of like the Canon look that everybody wants from the camera. So for this, if you take this button on the top and you scroll left to right, you'll be able to change your RAW. But if you hit the D-pad on the bottom, you'll be able to go through your JPEG menu. Now, when it comes to picking your RAW and JPEG quality, for JPEG, you always wanna pick the L with the little half circle next to it. That's going to give you the best JPEG quality. But for RAW, it actually depends. If you have a powerful computer and you don't, you don't anticipate worrying about if your computer is gonna be able to handle these images, RAW is the best. But if you don't have the most powerful computer and you also wanna save a little bit of space on your card, Compress RAW is also good. You're really not gonna lose anything in terms of image quality, but the file will be smaller, it's compressed, and your computer has to do more work to uncompress it when you're editing. And underneath that, you'll also see Dual Pixel RAW. Now, this is a proprietary thing that Canon has where it lets you change the, your autofocus just by a little bit after you've already shot the image, but it requires a different editing software and I personally don't even use it. So I don't recommend other people use it either. It's kind of a hassle. And underneath that, you'll see still image aspect ratio. This is going to control what aspect ratio your images are shot in. Three by two is going to let you see the entire sensor. Four by three is gonna give you a bit more of a square. 16 by nine is what this video is. It's the horizontal landscape video. And one by one is just square. Some people might wanna shoot in this if they want to uh, post on Instagram. But the really cool thing is, even after you take an image, let's just take this image in square, 
and then I go over to my preview, you'll see that the image still has all the stuff on the side. It just shows you a square preview. Now, if you're shooting in JPEG, it will just be a square JPEG, but if you're shooting in RAW, you'll still be able to see the sides. And over onto the second menu, now this has some really important settings on it. You'll see ISO speed setting. You wanna click into that and you'll see ISO speed at 12,800. This is going to change whatever your ISO speed currently is on your camera, but you wanna go down here and change your ISO speed range. The lower your ISO is on most cameras, the cleaner it is. The R7 is good between 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, 12,800. So what I actually wanna do is, I wanna minimize this to not go higher than 6400. And this way I'm not accidentally shooting on ISO that I don't want to. Now back onto the main menu on page two, you'll also see HDR PQ. Now this is a setting that I recommend people turn on if they want a flatter image, if they wanna be able to maybe just edit their JPEGs and you want like just a little bit more room to play around with. But for the most part, you get a little bit more dynamic range, but it kind of washes out your image in my opinion. And I don't recommend most casual shooters use it, but for pros, this might be actually really helpful. But in case you're someone that's working with really tricky lighting or maybe nighttime shoots and you want HDR, right below that is HDR mode. You can click into it and you'll turn it to auto or you are on and you can pick how many stops under and over it will take different photos and then combine them together into one solid HDR photo. And underneath that, you'll also see continuous HDR where you can either pick one shot or every shot this way. Maybe you just want one shot in HDR or maybe you want every shot in HDR. Now moving over to page four of this menu, you'll see an option called picture style. You wanna click into that and this is really important for casual shooters. Within this, you'll see a bunch of different picture profiles with different levels of saturation, contrast, whatnot. And you basically wanna try and pick the one that suits your shooting scenario the best. Standard just looks great. You can also set it to auto and it will decide for itself. I personally just shoot in portrait or landscape whenever I'm shooting. The other ones, I don't really like the saturation on them. Those two I think are the best, but this is going to dramatically change the level of saturation and color in your photos. And if you're a casual shooter that does not plan to edit them, using the right picture profile is really important. Another thing you can do is if you pick a picture profile that you like, you press the info button, it will actually let you adjust the profile the way you want it. And within this profile, you can adjust the strength of the sharpness, the fineness of detail, contrast, saturation, color tone. So this way you can kind of make your own picture profile if you want to. And if you actually hit the menu button again, there's also three different user defined picture profiles that you can also set up. And moving over to page five, you'll see something called high ISO speed and R, that's noise reduction. Once you click into it, you'll see two options, low, standard, and then high. I actually recommend leaving this completely off, mainly because the Canon R7 does a really good job with noise already. And if you're someone that wants to edit your photos later, you might as well just do it in Lightroom and Photoshop. But if you're someone that's consistently getting noisy images, go into noise reduction and set it to standard or high. Play around with both. I personally just like to leave it off. Now moving over to page six, there's a bunch of really advanced options in here, but the one that I wanna point out is raw burst mode. Now, chances are, if you're a casual shooter, you probably just wanna shoot JPEGs, but you might want to shoot really fast in raw mode because it has an interesting feature for it. Now let's move on to the really important stuff. On page seven, you'll see something called drive mode. Now this is going to define how fast and how many photos per second your camera is taking. So once you click into drive mode, you'll see a bunch of different settings. Now in single shooting, one photo, high speed continuous, this is as fast as it can go. High speed continuous, it's going a little bit slower. I think it's about 10 frames per second. Low continuous, you're at about five frames per second. But if you want the most amount of photos, high speed continuous plus is the way to go. And just in case you wanna set up your camera and have the camera take photos of you, you can also scroll over to self timer. Now this has a couple of different options, but one self timer, uh, 10 seconds slash remote, this you hit, hit your remote or the shutter button on the camera and it will take 10 seconds before it takes a photo or you can set a self timer for two seconds or you can come over here and actually set a self timer continuous and you can choose how many photos in a row it will take before it stops shooting. Also, if you wanna change the drive mode as in how fast your camera shoots without having to go back into the menus every single time, if you go to the back of the camera, hit the Q button and bring up your quick menu, down here in the bottom left, you'll actually see your drive mode option and down here you can actually change your drive mode much faster than going into your menus. Now, if you wanna get the most power out of the Canon R7 in photo mode, another really important setting on the same page is shutter mode. Now in shutter mode, you can actually pick mechanical 
first is current electronic or electronic. Now in electronic mode, you can actually go from 15 frames per second all the way to 30 frames per second. Electronic mode does have this one small issue where in that mode, you get a little bit of jello and wobbling. For mechanical shutter mode, it will not have that effect, but you literally double the speed of your camera. So it's worth shooting in this mode for this specific scenario. Now, if you're gonna be taking fast photos, you also wanna make sure your autofocus is working properly. Otherwise, you're going to take super fast photos, but none of it will be usable. So let's show you how to set up your autofocus properly. Now, there's two ways to do this. One, go into your menu and scroll all the way to the second menu option, which says AF on it. And within this, you'll see a bunch of different options. Now, AF operation one shot, if you click into this, or servo. Servo will pretty much keep your autofocus adjusting as your scene and subject change. One shot just holds the autofocus, takes a photo, and then changes it again once you push the shutter button again. I recommend keeping it on servo. And below that, you'll see autofocus area. Now with autofocus area, if you're picking the whole area autofocus, it's looking at your entire sensor area. But if you go over to spot AF, this is just picking one small spot on your screen. And with one point AF, this is kind of doing the same, but it's just one very, very small spot. Then there's expanded autofocus area, and then there's also um, flexible zone one, two, and three. And I'll show you how to uh, do more with those in just a second. But for most people, I recommend just keeping it on whole area or spot autofocus. And underneath that, you'll also see subject tracking. Once you go into subject tracking and you have it on, make sure it's on. And then underneath that, you'll see an option for subject to detect. And once you click into that, you can choose people, animals, or vehicles. This will basically set up your autofocus so that it's only focusing on people, it's only focusing on animals or vehicles. And this way, it's just going to make your autofocus system overall more reliable and it's going to do more of what you want it to do. For most people, I just recommend picking the option that you have. And underneath that, you'll also see eye detection. This is really important. Everything that you're going to be shooting has eyes, animals, people. So with eye detection, it'll basically focus on people's eyes. If you're shooting people, you don't want it to focus on their shirt or maybe their hair. You want it to always be on their face. So eye detection is really important to turn on. Now, here's a really interesting option, switching track subjects. Now, here's the interesting thing. If you set this to two or maybe even one, what this will essentially do is that if you have multiple subjects in the frame, and you're shooting video or photos, we'll basically try to switch between the subjects. I actually am leaving this at one, and this way it's not hopping between subjects too much. Now, if you really wanna fine tune how your autofocus works, if you go to the second page in the autofocus menu, you'll see servo AF with a bunch of different things. Now you have to make sure you set your autofocus to servo for this to work, but it will give you different shooting scenarios for different types of moving subjects. Subjects that, that accelerate or move really quickly, subjects that enter the frame and leave the frame really quickly. So for this, you wanna read through this menu and pick the right subject detect mode for you. And at the bottom, you'll also see you can change the tracking sensitivity and how quickly your autofocus accelerates and decelerates. And this is really important for people that are shooting a lot of intense action. Now, similar to drive mode, if you don't wanna to have to go into your menus to change your autofocus every single time, simply go to the back of your camera, hit the quick menu button, and you'll see your quick menu settings pop up. At the top left corner, you'll see your autofocus. Once you're in there, click left or right to change your autofocus settings. And within that, you'll actually see spot, one point, expanded area, uh, expand area around, flexible zones, and then of course, wide. Now I wanna quickly show you guys how to adjust your flexible zone autofocus. So once you've picked the flexible zone autofocus, you wanna hit this button right here, and this will actually allow you to change your autofocus area by hitting the left or right keypads. And this way you can set up your own autofocus area that best suits your shooting style. Also, another thing to mention is that the autofocus modes work pretty much the same way in video mode as well, so you can apply all of this to video. Now, if you're struggling with shaky photos or video, here's a really easy way to fix that. In your same menu, go to page eight and click on IS image stabilization mode, click into that, and you'll see that right now the modes are off. If you click IS mode on for the first option, this will turn IS mode on for photos. If you click it on for the second option that has a little camera next to it, this is for video. And you wanna make sure if you're shooting still photos, still photo is always on. And another thing you can do to make sure your images aren't crooked is right below that, there's an option called auto level. Because the camera actually has, um, I guess, image dampeners or uh, movement dampeners on the sensor, will actually make sure that once this is enabled, if your photo is just a little bit crooked, it will actually automatically straighten it out. Nothing ruins an image like a crooked image. So this is a really easy thing 
to just turn on in your camera and you're going to get better looking photos just because they're not crooked. Now, when it comes to video, one really simple mistake that a lot of people make is that they actually go to page 10 on their first on their camera menu and they see a bunch of video options and these are going to change how your video is shot, but this is only if you hit the movie record button in photo mode. This does not carry over to your actual video record mode. In order to get the video for the best settings and all that good stuff, you wanna flip over to video record mode on this top button here, go into menus, and you'll notice your menus are completely different. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna to go to movie record size, and you'll see a bunch of different options. Now, each of these is important for a different shooting scenario. If you're someone that doesn't wanna have a lot of data on their card, full HD is a great way to go. 4K crop basically crops into your sensor so you get a tighter shot, but it's still in 4K just in case you ever need a like a little bit more reach with your shot. This is a good mode to go with because it's a 32 megapixel sensor. It's not going to completely destroy your video quality. And there's also regular 4K. Now this is kind of interesting how this camera does 4K. In just regular 4K, not 4K fine, you have different options and this just gives you a standard 4K video file and you can record this in 23, 29, and 60 frames per second. And you also have different compression types like IPB and then IPB compress. We'll talk about that compression in a second. But if you wanna get the best 4K quality, you actually wanna go over to 4K fine. And you'll notice you cannot record in 4K 60 with this. In this mode, what it actually does is it takes the entire 32 megapixel image sensor area squeezes it down to 4K. So your 4K video really has the detail and clarity of 7K. And if you don't need slow motion, this is the ideal way to shoot video with this camera, but you can only shoot this in 24 and 30 frames per second. And you might be asking yourself, what's the best frame rate for shooting my video? Well, it depends. If you click down in this menu, you'll see 23, 29, and 60. 23 is your cinematic standard frame rate mode. This is the slowest your camera can shoot while maintaining the illusion of video because video is just still images back to back to back. 30 frames per second is what most YouTubers use. It's what most media and TV uses. It has less motion blur and the video overall just looks smoother. So if you're doing something professional, this might be a better thing to use. But if you're shooting cinematic content, you still wanna go with 23 frames per second. And if you're someone that likes slow motion, this actually has more than one slow motion in this camera. But if you like slow motion, you simply go over to 60 frames per second, and this way you can record two times slow motion. Now, one thing to note is that it does not slow it down for you in camera. That's a different mode, but 60 frames per second is really your bread and butter slow motion, but you will have to take this video and slow it down later on, either in your phone or in editing software. And you'll also notice there's a compression option at the bottom. IPB and IPB compressed. IPB is kind of like the prosumer level codec or video file type that pretty much non-professionals use. If you wanna save a little bit of room on your card, you can go with IPB compressed. And the other benefit of this is, in my scenario, and I have a really good computer, whenever I try to look at IPB files on my computer without an editing software, it won't let me just open it up with like, iMovie uh, with the QuickTime player or like Windows Media Player. But IPB Lite will open up without having to use a third-party software. So IPB Lite is probably the codec you wanna use if you're just a professional dad, just like a professional regular person that's just shooting for fun and you never wanna touch an editing software. Now, if you're someone that does love slow motion but you want the video slowed down for you in camera, you simply go to the first page and click on high frame rate mode turn that on and once you go back to movie record size you'll see that it's now full hd it's not 4k it's only full hd which is 1920 by 1080 and underneath that you now have the option of 120 frames per second which is five times slow motion and with that you still have the ipb and ipb compressed if you're going to be shooting in this mode i actually recommend shooting in ipb because slow motion requires so much more data. You want a codec that also has more data in it. And you also wanna make sure you turn high frame rate off when you don't want slow motion. Otherwise, all of your footage will be in slow motion. Now, moving on to the second page of the video menu, you'll see an option called HDR PQ mode. I actually recommend turning this on specifically for video shooters because in this mode, you now get 10-bit color where regular video mode is only 8-bit color, so you get more pic uh, more color information. And while it does make your image look a little bit flatter, I think in some ways it can actually make it more look more cinematic and of course it gives you more control over your image. And you'll also notice highlight tone priority is turned on by default because this mode gives you more information in your highlights. 
Now, another way to get really good video quality out of this camera is actually turning off HDRPQ mode, going over to the next menu, and you have Canon log settings. Now, once you turn this on, it gets a little bit complicated, but we're gonna walk through it. First thing you wanna do is you wanna turn view assist on because otherwise you're going to get a very flat image in your camera screen and it's not a very inspiring image to look at. You can't really gauge whether your shot is good or not. So you wanna make sure view assist is turned on. There's also something called characteristics. I recommend keeping this completely off. If you're gonna be shooting in log, you wanna make sure you don't bake in any settings and this way you have the most amount of uh, flexibility with your image afterwards. You can always add things like sharpness, saturation later on, but you can take them out. And underneath this, you also have color space and you actually have three different color spaces. Now, which color space you pick and is really going to depend on what's right for you. BT709, this is really for HDR TVs. 709 is pretty much the standard, like you're going to get really good colors. BT2020 is only if you have an HDR workflow and Cinema Gamut is actually what I shoot in. This gives you the most cinematic colors. The colors are very different in Cinema Gamut mode compared to regular photo mode, but I really like the colors in this, and this is the one I recommend most serious shooters shoot in. But if you're someone that just wants more dynamic range for maybe a corporate video, 709 is probably your best option. And just like photo mode, you also have picture styles in video mode that you can pick to get the right colors or the best colors. Once again, portrait and landscape, in my opinion, look the best. And just like um, in photo mode, you can also hit the info button, go into every single one of these modes and adjust them for your liking. And if you wanna make sure your video is as crisp as possible, go over to page four and actually turn noise reduction completely off. And this way you're not applying any kind of noise reduction in camera. Noise reduction usually makes your image look a little bit softer. So by having this completely off, it actually gives you more control over your image because you can always take noise, noise out, but you can't really get rid of that softness. And if you are someone that's shooting at high ISOs, I recommend shooting in full stops of ISO from 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, and 12,800. You will get very clean results. And if you wanna make sure you're shooting on the right ISO settings, you wanna go all the way to the right to this camera icon page. And over here, you'll see exposure level increments. And underneath that, you see ISO speed setting increments. You wanna make sure this is on one stop. And this way, it's not going to go between 800 and 1600. It's just going to go from 800 to 1600. And this way, you'll make sure you're always shooting in the right ISOs. And on top of that, one last trick that I wanna give you guys is also if you go all the way back a video menu and you go over here and there's HDMI display, just in case you plan on using a monitor or an external recorder with your, uh, with your camera, you can choose for it to show you settings on the back screen and then give you a clean monitor, or you can have it show you all of your settings just right on the monitor. It's going to depend on what settings you want. If you're someone that's using an Atomos Shogun like I am to do external recording the way that I did for these menus, I recommend shooting on the first option. This way it'll give you your menus and your settings on the back of the screen, but your HDMI out will be completely clean and you can record that for a really high quality video. And if you guys follow the settings in this video, you will get the best possible photo and video quality. And before I go, if you wanna check out the Canon R7, I'll leave links in the description down below. And also there's a link to a free video training on how to get better photos and videos within an hour. So if you wanna get better with your camera, make sure to check out that video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.